Personal Protective Clothing and Equipment, PPE, is designed to shield individuals from potential harm, whether from chemicals, biological agents, radioactive particles, heat, and other physical threats. Hazmat teams regularly use PPE to keep themselves safe, but terrorism response can unfold quickly and involve responders who may not be trained and equipped to use PPE. There have been numerous incidents involving victims of hazardous materials emergencies that have resulted in impacts to hospitals, including secondary contamination of healthcare workers and the temporary closing of emergency departments. The affected workers were typically unprotected and had close extended contact with the contaminated victims. Selecting the correct type of PPE is a challenge. Much of the PPE in today's marketplace has not necessarily been designed for medical first receivers. The type of chemical protective equipment needed will depend on the hazards to be encountered and the type of situation. Too little protection can result in exposure. The PPE itself can hinder physical dexterity make certain tasks difficult or impossible to perform, and can increase physiological stress, heat stress, and physical hazards, such as trips and falls. The potential for injury is particularly high for personnel who only occasionally use this equipment. This is the third part of a series called Hospital First Receiver, and is titled Self-Protection. It is designed to provide first receivers with the information they need to safely and effectively manage patients who may pose a secondary contamination risk. The program will explore why protective equipment is needed, examine the different types of respiratory protection and the different configurations for protective clothing. It will review the EPA's levels of protection and the national standards for chemical protective clothing. Procedures for inspecting donning and doffing protective clothing and equipment will be outlined and issues relating to heat stress will be covered. 